This is the operational amplifier that we will test today. It is an OP277 op amp, which is very similar to the LF341. It will be supplied by plus and minus 12 volts. That will come from this battery operated power supply. You have the digital unit connected over here. The gain is set by the feedback resistor and R1. R1 is 1 kilo ohm. The feedback resistor is 10 kilo ohm. Since it's a non inverting amplifier, the gain is 11 volts per volt. Channel 1 of the oscilloscope is connected to the waveform generator 1. Channel 2 of the oscilloscope is connected to pin 6 of the op amp, which is the output. Let us start the Digiland waveform software. We will first check the transient response of the operational amplifier circuit. Whenever we characterize an amplifier circuit, we should always check the DC levels and the transient response before we look at the frequency response of the circuit. Start the oscilloscope. Let's run the oscilloscope. Right now, pretty much there's nothing because the circuit is off. Let us go start the wave function generator. We'll choose a sinusoidal waveform, which we find under the basic tab. We will set the frequency to 1 kilohertz, the amplitude to 100 millivolts, and the offset to 0 volts. Let's first turn on the voltage source for the operational amplifier, and then hit run. I currently have the channel 2, the output at 1 volt per division, and channel 1 at 100 millivolt per division, and we expect to get a gain of about 11 volts per volt, which seems to be the case. There is practically no phase shift at 1 kilohertz. We can now go ahead and increase the frequency of the signal to see how that will affect. Let's go to 10 kilohertz, adjust this to 100 microseconds per division. Again, the gain seems to be more or less unchanged. There might be a slight phase difference, but it's hard to tell. We'll see that better with the network analyzer. And let's go to 100 kilohertz and set to 10 microseconds per division. Now we can distinctly see the phase shift. The amplitude has decreased a little bit, though it's hard to say in this scope right now. Let's go back to a 1 kilohertz signal so that we can demonstrate the effect of slew rate. We'll use 1 kilohertz, set this back to 1 millisecond per division, and we have 10 periods. If I increase now the input amplitude to 1 volt, I should get a full, nearly full swing. In fact, the input has a 1 volt peak, and the output is at, as expected, close to plus and minus 10 volts per volt. The output is still rather sinusoidal at 1 kilohertz. In fact, if I were to bring my frequency down to 100 hertz, I should get an even nicer sinusoidal signal. What will happen, though, if I change my frequency now to, let's say, 50 kilohertz? At 50 kilohertz, our input is still 1 volt peak. It's still relatively sinusoidal, but when we look at the output, the output is now quite straight, quite triangular, in fact, and it doesn't even reach the limits that we expected. When we go back to the uh, waveform generator and reduce the amplitude to 100 millivolts, we get a nice sinusoidal output with roughly the gain that we expect. When we go to a higher input amplitude of 1 volt, we can see that the output is now slew rate limited. The output change is linear. It's not sinusoidal when it's going from the peak to the valley and vice versa. And that clues us into the fact that slew rate is what's limiting the response of this amplifier. Now let's do a quick frequency response of this circuit. I'll go and start the network analyzer. 100 hertz is the start frequency, 5 megahertz is the end frequency, 0 volt is the DC offset, 200 millivolts is the signal amplitude. Let's set this to 100 millivolts now. We'll want 200 points and the maximum gain is 50x. Let's run this in a single. The top is the body plot of the magnitude, the bottom is the body plot of the phase. They can change the body scale. Let's make the range here a little bit less. 40 dB is good. And the top of the body scale should be, let's make it 30 dB. We can see that the operational amplifiers circuits voltage gain is roughly constant at 20 dB up to about 100 kilohertz, after which it drops with a 20 dB per decade slope. The phase response 
of the output is nearly flat until we get to about 10 kilohertz when it starts to increase. So the non-inverting amplifier starts to become an inverting amplifier as you go to higher and higher frequencies. This is due to the phase response of the operational amplifier. Note that for a 100 millivolt signal, even at 100 kilohertz, we don't expect much of a change in the output. The gain should be relatively flat, except for the phase change. This, though, is because our input is small enough that the output is not slew rate limited, or it's not clipping. If I were to change my output to 1 volt and redo this measurement, the output response would change quite a bit. As you can see, the 3 dB frequency now looks like it's a lot worse. It's actually the slew rate that's limiting us. And you can choose to view the time domain signal to see what's going on. You want to view channel 2 and see what happens. So if I run this again, you can see that at the output it's 10 volts peak, but then it gets slew rate limited, and that's what's making this transfer characteristics look weird. If I change this to 100 millivolts from the beginning and redo the measurement, Now I get a more accurate small signal measurement. We can also redo that with 20 millivolts to see how that impacts the measurement. You'll notice that the smaller the input signal becomes, the noisier the measurement becomes, and we will not prefer to use very small input signals. All right, the final thing I would like to show here is what if we had saturated the amplifier from the beginning? So let's say we put an input voltage of 2 volts. You can see in the time domain that the output is saturating, and therefore, instead of measuring a 20 dB signal, we would be measuring about a 16.5 dB signal, which is clearly not what the gain should be.